feeling cute. Might put some Gator Glide on this boat later. I don't know. In this video, we're going to be putting Gator Base and Gator Glide on our 1648 John Boat Project Bottomland Bateau. I'm going to walk you step by step, so stick around, show you how to do it. Send it. If you like John Boats, mud motors, and things that make you want to just yell, yeah, yeah then you've come to the right place, partner. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you go right down below here, hit that subscribe button and a little bell thingy right next to it so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. All right, so Gator Glide, I love this stuff. It is super, super slick. And if you're not familiar with Gator Glide, it is a water-based silicone epoxy coating that you put on the bottom of your boat. The way that it works is it breaks the surface tension on whatever it is your boat is sitting on, whether it be water or mud or sand or whatever, and it helps the boat slide off of it a lot easier. I've used it on several previous boats and I absolutely love it. If this is going to be your first time applying Gator Glide, there's a few things you need to be aware of before you get started. The biggest thing is going to be whether you have good paint already on the bottom of your boat or whether the paint on the bottom of your boat kind of sucks and it's not sticking very well. You just need to be very, very certain that the paint on the bottom of your boat is in great condition because the Gator Glide is only going to stick as well as the paint on the bottom of your boat. So if you've got paint that's chipping or flaking or starting to peel off, if you put Gator Glide over the top of that nasty paint that's coming off, then the Gator Glide is just going to come off. So you'll need to do what I did, which is strip the boat all the way back down to bare aluminum. And oh my God, on my boat, Jesus Christ, I don't know what the last owner did. If you've seen my paint removal video, I'll leave a link to it where one of these places over here, my boat has like seven layers of freaking paint on it. And it's like some good old 1970s lead base slathering it on as thick as they possibly could with a paintbrush. It was a nightmare. The paint on my boat is probably one of the worst I have ever seen and I have never seen that many layers of paint on a boat before but I started out with sandblasting. I went through over 200 pounds of sandblast media just to get this teeny tiny little section done on my boat. Finally gave up. I was like this is going to cost me a fortune in sandblasting material and I went and tried a bunch of different paint strippers. So I found one paint stripper that was like a gel that you brush on and it seemed to be working pretty good at taking off about the first four or five layers but those last two layers were just like stuck on there really, really good. So I got as much off as I could with the paint stripper and then went back to sandblasting again, got the whole boat sandblasted, and now it is down to bare aluminum. Now the Gator Glide itself does not require that you use a primer beforehand, but Gator Glide does make a product that they call Gator Base, which you can use if you're going to be putting over bare aluminum, which I highly highly recommend the gator base is great stuff but if you're just going to be putting this over a paint job that's already in good shape just make sure it's scuffed real well and you can put the gator glide right over the top of it it'll work just fine and i've done that in the past but since my boat's now down to bare aluminum on the bottom it's got the perfect sandblasted surface this is a great opportunity to put the gator base down first and then the gator glide over the top of it if you decide to go with gator base and gator glide like i did i highly recommend that you pick two different colors don't use the same color for both and here's why after several seasons of use and running through sand and rocks and bumping into stuff you may have some areas of wear on your actual gator glide and you want to be able to differentiate between it and the base underneath so what i did was i went with that lighter gray color and then the darker graphite over the top so that once it starts to wear through i'll have a gray area showing and i'll know that i need to do a touch up in that little area no big deal so putting on the gator base was not a huge deal at all once we had the tape line down and ran some painter's paper and painter's plastic all the way around the boat just to cover up my fresh paint job because i didn't want to accidentally spill any gator glide on the sides and then we went through a wipe the whole boat down to make sure everything was good and clean before we started putting the gator base on. Gator Glide actually recommends that you use acetone to wipe the side of the boat down, but I just put a fresh paint job on my boat and I didn't want to risk spilling any acetone on it, so I went with naphtha, which is what I use in my hydrographic shop all the time. It's a really good degreaser, but naphtha, acetone, both will work just fine. We're going to get a lot more detailed about how to do the mixing and actually apply this stuff in just a few minutes, but I forgot to walk you through the process as I was doing the gator base. I kind of got ahead of myself because so I forgot that I was filming a video on this. So putting the first coat on, on, got it all done. And the thing to remember with Gator Glide is thin to win. They, they put it in their instruction manual like 35 freaking times. You got to put this stuff on super, super thin. Now, as you can see from this first coat that I just got done putting on, you can see through the Gator base down to the bare aluminum. That's what you want it to look like. You do not want to put this stuff on super thick. It's not like normal paint. As you build up the coats, it will eventually cover all that bare aluminum. You just have to put it on super, super thin so that it will dry correctly. The Gator base and Gator Glide will dry in about 20 minutes or less in between coats. So I've done this in the past on like 85, 90 degree day. You literally start at the front of the the boat and by the time you get to the back the front half is already dry so you just run back to the front and start over again and you can knock out five coats of gator base or gator glide in like an hour and a half two hours it's 
not that bad boat. Now, that's a 1648 with float pods. So, and I still had some left over. Like, I, I probably could have done maybe like another half a coat if I wanted to. And after you get that last coat of gator base on, it is time to let it dry per the instructions. All right, so it has been three days since we applied the gator base. It is completely cured out, and that is exactly what Gator Glide recommends, is it's when you put on the base that you wait a minimum of 72 hours. So our next step is to scuff the entire boat. Now, they say you can use either 220 grit sandpaper or red scotch bright pad. I have tons of red scotch bright pads over at the hydrographic shop, so I just brought some over here, and that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to scuff the entire boat, clean it one more time real good, and then we'll start applying the Gator Glide. So I got everything scuffed with the red scotch sprite pad, and as you can see, all we're doing is basically just taking the shine off of the gator base. We're not really doing a whole lot of sanding, just want to give it a good scuff so that the gator glide will stick to it. And as you'll see after you get done, there is a pretty good coat of sanding dust all over this. Now they recommend using acetone to wipe the entire thing down. I'm actually going to use naphtha in this squirt bottle, and basically all I'm going to do is just squirt some of this on, give this a good wipe get it all nice and clean I'll probably end up wiping it twice because there's quite a bit of dust on here so that cleaned up all nice and pretty I went through a ton of these blue shop towels make sure that when you do this and you are cleaning wipe a section flip your rag over wipe a section and keep changing out your rag so that you don't keep smearing the same old dust around in circles because if you do you'll have to go back and do this multiple times now, after i finished with my blue shop towels i went back over it one more time with a white rag just so that i can check and see and make sure there's no more dust left on the surface if you guys have ever watched my hydro dipping videos or seen me paint boat stuff before you know that i'm a stickler for keeping stuff clean this is what can make or break a paint job or a gator glide job in this case now mixing up your gator glide and gator base is not exactly rocket surgery what they suggest is that if you're using a kit that's like this as a half gallon you want to divide it up into five coats what they recommend you do is figure out on your bottle where your top level is at so mine was filled up to about right here and then just take a sharpie and mark out five equal lines so that you have five equal sections the most important step of all this is just making sure you actually get it mixed once you pour your gator glide or gator base into your cup you need to make sure that the part a is mixed with your high shear mixer really really well before you add in your hardener or curing agent as they call it and then once you put that in you need to mix both of them together really really well this stuff goes a really really long way remember you have to put this stuff on really really thin it's not like normal paint So what you want to do to get started is wet your roller down in the bottom of the bucket and then use this just a little paint grid and roll off most of the liquid because you really don't need a whole lot. This stuff goes a long way. And remember, you're putting this on really, really thin. And basically all you want to do is just start spreading it around really good. Get it over all these ribs. So I just finished this whole section real quick and I wanted to show you something. As you're spreading this stuff on, it looks like it's not even sticking, but as it starts to cure up, what you'll see is all these little bitty tiny fish eyes in it. And this is completely normal. It is supposed to do this. I know this is like really, really weird, but this is how this stuff works. Don't worry, it's completely normal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next section. After we get done rolling that section, we'll come back with our roller still dry and roll over this section one more time and it'll tighten it up really good. All right, so I just finished rolling on that side. Now we're gonna go back to our original section and I can already see that this is starting to fish eye up and I like literally just finished it. So I'm gonna come back over here while my roller is still dry, I haven't put it back in and I'm gonna roll back over this one more time and get this stuff all really good and tightened up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit, I'm gonna let that side sit and go ahead and get the next couple of sections done and then I'll come back as it cures up a little bit and tighten it up one more time. One more thing I wanna mention, do not buy these microfiber rollers, they suck. They are leaving little pieces of lint and they're shedding all over the place. It's not a big deal. It's just a, you know, it's driving me nuts because I want this to look good and I got lint all over the place. So what you can do is literally just take your finger, wipe it off real quick, 
get that lint off. I'm just wiping it down here on the side of the boat where I got the paper on it. And then just roll back over it real quick, smooth it back out. In between your coats, when you get done with one coat and you're waiting for it to dry on the next coat, it takes about 20 minutes or so, depending on how cool or hot it is. All you need to do is just take a rag and lay it over the top of your bucket. That way you'll keep any coating that's inside of your bucket that's left over from the previous coat from drying out. And then when you mix your next coat, like I'm about to do, all you gotta do is just dump it right back in the bucket and mix the two together and you're good to go again. So our first coat is done. It is just about dry to the touch and ready for the second coat. So I'm not gonna bore y'all with making you watch all five coats of this because it's, it's gonna take a while. This ain't no easy process. It's labor intensive, but it's well worth it in the end. This stuff is slicker than ours. I'm going to get back to work. I'll see you guys on the last coat. So that's all she wrote, folks. There is five coats. They are finally done. So I'm going to give this about 20 minutes to dry, and then we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so we're at the very last step. The last coat's dry. I've given it about 20 minutes. It's dry to the touch. I ain't got to worry about it coming off on my gloves or anything. So this is a little pro tip. This one's free, but the next one's going to cost you. So what you want to do before you remove this tape is you want to get the sharpest razor blade you can get, one brand new out of the package if you can. And what you're going to do is you're going to go around all of your tape lines right at the edge of the tape, and you're going to score that tape line. Now you're not digging in and trying to actually cut all the way through all the layers. Basically all you want to do is just give it a nice clean score line and you're not putting a whole lot of pressure. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to run around the boat and do this real quick and then I'll show you how clean these tape lines come out. All right, are y'all ready for this? I had to take my hoodie off. I was getting all hot and bothered because I already did the front. <sighs> It look good. And one more thing that I forgot to mention when I was filming the video, once you finish applying the Gator Glide and everything's done, the longer you let it sit and cure and get hard, the better it will be in the long run. You want to wait at least a minimum of 48 hours before you put your boat in the water or put it back on the trailer or put it to any kind of use at all. Minimum of 48 hours. If you can wait a week, even better. The longer you let it sit, the harder it gets. So overall, I really love the way this Gator Glide turned out. It was a little bit of a process. It takes some time, but it's not a difficult install at all. This stuff is super, super slick. I can't wait to get it out on the river. So the boat's going to be sitting out here for a few more weeks while I finish welding up the trailer. The trailer is going to look awesome. I can't wait to get it done. It's actually going to fit this boat instead of, you know, being like a little bitty jet ski trailer with this giant boat on top of it. So that's what's up next for Project Bottomland Bato. So stay tuned because you don't want to miss the trailer. Video. Now Gator Glide is some super super slick stuff, but if you need something slick to go on your pew pews or anything else, definitely check out our channel sponsor Freedom Lube. They make some awesome stuff that is also super slick. Not for personal use kind of slick. But if you want to save some money on the slick stuff that they make, I got a coupon code down in the description box. Now we're going to roll those bloopers here for you in just a second, but as always let us remember, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye guys. Stuff is really slippery. <laughs> and basically, the way it works is it. Hi uh, Everything on the side of the boat, I use plastic and like painters' paper. Is it called painters' paper? I don't. Know. Yeah, sure. Why not? A gator guide. Gator guide. Gator guide. Ignore the bird poop right there. That's not supposed to be there at all. Oh, and look, there, there's more bird poop.
and there's where are all these freaking birds coming from? It's almost like a slip and slide. 